Let's talk about the last part, and that is to get the prosthetics in the mouth, and that's gonna start with making sure the implants were rotated properly, perfectly, because that really is key. And something I was taught by uh, Dr. James Hamill over in Ireland is uh, something he does on every case, every case. He loves the word always, because he yes. always does things Same. that's, that's predictable. But one of his is that he always makes sure that as he's rotating the implant, that he is timing the depth with the rotation with the stopping point all yes. at the same time. And you right. can do that yes. with any kit. Yes. He does it with one particular kit, but you can right. do it with any. Because what my, my point is that you don't want to have to go backwards. Right. You want to go forward. And, and you don't want to come back in 20 minutes later yes. and keep turning it. You've right. got your friction yes. in there. you got your torque. So yes. you just focus on the implant while you're turning, while you're turning, you're timing it. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I can do one more. Boom. You're there. You're done. You're done. Right. And exactly. I think that is a brilliant way to, to put thing. these in as opposed to fussing around with it. Right. So you have to, 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 we said that in the previous module, to place your implants just below the osteotomy guide. Right. Now, <clears throat> if you're confident, you've done multiples of these, you can time it in this osteotomy guide. There's actually little nubs on there that with every system that will tell you the timing of the, the, the implant and the 17 or 30 degree multi-unit abutment. Right. That will go on there. Yeah, that tells you where okay. to stop rotating. So that, that, that will tell you where to stop rotating. Now, for some reason, if you've taken a little bit more bone away on the osteotomy and you feel that you want to go deeper, we have the carrier guide that has the timing on it as well. And then you can place your abutment through this, screw it down, and make sure that it, it seats 100% where it is. The black line, imagine the black line is following the screw that goes Scratch through the abutment well. yeah. and then into the implant. So that's right. the trajectory of the implant and the abutment screw. That's the direction of it. And that's where your driver, hopefully you're using a yeah. contra angle right. driver yeah. and yeah. you're outside the mouth. But right. either way, yeah. you have a, your, 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 your driver, your screw, and everything is going into the implant. That, that, that way you know exactly where it, the screw should be on the abutment and where your driver's gonna go in. It's a really unique way to time your, to time your abutment. So, so one of the, um, the really great tips that we've found out in the past five years, what we've done is, is that every time we have an issue, we solve it. And by, by uh, you know, solving, I mean that we've had the pins in the package, so we came up with the holder. Um, one of the things that we recommend that you have as a contra angle driver, mm -hmm. So that you can actually do these things because it's especially in your terminal implants in the back to get back there Tough. with a driver and the, the implant the button mount and somebody it, else's it, somebody's holding it you want to be as efficient as possible doing your prosthetic part of it yeah and sometimes that takes longer than the surgery yeah right often and so, um, so buy a contra angle driver yeah so contra angle driver mouth. yeah your implant buddy that from from pre that that we have on, in our online shop. Right. Um, it has all the all the components for any implant system. All the drivers. It is it has helped me out in multiple situations where the doctor had a short driver, and we couldn't reach in the anterior yeah. prosthetically because your teeth were too long, and we couldn't get the screw right. in. And I used the implant body. You, you have to have a, a short. You don't have, have a short. You have to have a medium and a, a long. Medium and long. So no matter again, what you have to yeah. Do. So again. One of the requirements is to have the right tooling, right? right. So medium, short, short for the back, because sometimes the patient can't open. You're doing a double arch, and you're putting the prosthesis in, yeah. and you're trying to get in there with that screw. Yeah. So it's, it's it's very difficult. So one of the one of the other reasons that implant rotation is key. Yes, we get the other abutments lined up in right. the right place. We're happy, but why do we do that? It's because of this image right here. This is the temp cylinders. And you can see, if, you, if you're in surgery with this patient, you'll say, uh-oh, one of my 10 cylinders is not in the right position. But you'll look up at the surgery man and you'll go, it is. It is, yeah. It is the way we planned it. Right. So it's a little bit sticking out. Right. But based on this, if you see this in the mouth, then you know you have the implants in the right place, the above is the right place, 10 cylinders are all aiming in the right place. And then you should, maybe not on number 10 there, but you should have a draw. Right. And that, that is key for draw right but it's also screw position Absolutely. long term yep and then we could do something a little bit different with number 10 on the right so so what we're doing with 10 now is, is that we're actually after we put the the temporary cylinders on we're going to put our um gaskets, our gaskets yep. on 
And our rubber dams doesn't go all the way down. So you put it halfway down because you have in the maxilla, your palatal tissue, if it's not sutured, that's in the way. Mm. And you want to make sure that this seat's positive on that there's no gap on this here. And the prosthetic has two little prongs that sticks out and it has two holes. So the X, Y, Z axis on this is 100% flush. Once that is flush, always in the palate, the palatal tissue, make sure that the palatal tissue is, is, is brought out. The seat's 100%. You've got your draw that you showed yeah. on there. And then you take your um, driver with your cylinder on there and go through the oh, temporary on, cylinder on number 10 on number 10 because and the, the, screw it in. the holes in the right place exactly you just don't have the draw you don't have the, the path so you drop it down from the so you drop it down from the occlusion i've also seen where you would leave number 10 a little bit loose tighten the you other one you can do that and too. you kind of wiggle it over yeah. there and then but then but, but what i'm afraid of there sometimes is that when you're doing when you're flying your prosthesis in that you might put pressure on the facial aspect of that implant and you oh. might be loosing it. Mm. So it's better just to, to tighten the ones drop that you in. have and then drop the last one gotcha. in. So you can actually pick it up with Stellar while it's there, pick it up, mm. and then then you don't have to have hands to do the last one. Or you could also, free. You could also pick up the five, the come four. back yeah. and pick up the other exactly. pick up the last one. Exactly. That's, that's another draw. way. Yep, yeah. that's another way. Different ways to right. different different ways to handle the draw and prospects. Right. So prior to surgery, most of the most of the uh, cylinders, if you need to adjust it a little bit, um, you can adjust it. Um, but it should, by all means, fit over it passively with space for the the bonding material. And um, right. And then and then do you sometimes pick up the rapid appliance? Or always. Do you, oh, always. always. Yes. Always. always pick up the rapid appliance. And why do you always pick up the rapid appliance? So your rapid appliance will save you about three hours at the end of your next surgery or your next uh, appointment with a patient because yeah. that gives you, number one, your reference of your implants. It's also a backup, number two, if something fractures, especially now we put, especially pink, now on we put pink on it. Yeah. And number, you know, number three, uh, you just put your, um, you put your pickup uh, low flow re PVS material on there and you're good to go tissue heights and, and yeah and take photos of it yeah, of this course is, this is the easy road to the final so that's always want to wanna, the final. always yeah. want to pick it up always and always even if you're in a hurry patients waking up i mean yeah. with the situation Absolutely. is you know, pick two thomas, or three up right? thomas often ends up picking up two or three because it's a tripod yeah. got to need to get out of surgery go ahead and index it pick it up yeah. and you know, a lot of these cases we do now are C2F or um, or smile lock, smile lock yeah. in which case we're taking one pickup and make plugging it into a model, right. and then you're only doing one pickup in the mouth. Anyway. Right, right. Yeah. So again, if you have any tips, that's well, there was one more thing. Add, yeah, there was one more thing. There, there's occasionally we have a little bite discrepancy. Yes, and you you can test that really early in the surgery. Once you have your bone reduction down, your carrier guide is in, you can put the prosthetic in, close the patient before they have too much fatigue and go, uh-oh, right. I, I got a bite situation. Right, you can take some articulating paper, mark it on there, and, and reduce it outside the mouth. You can reduce Should it, I do that? Yep. and then you can reduce it after you seat it, or I know sometimes you do you a little bit of a shimmying, yes. flow, because you, you, can, you can wedge the anterior, you can wedge the posterior, you can float yes. the prosthetic in until the bite is right. Right, so the bite, the most important thing. Right. You wanna make sure that the, the bite, so what I would do is, is that I would actually take an instrument and lift on the posterior or on the side. There's a little play on it, so you could literally push it into occlusion. Yeah. Yeah. So I would flow the stellar material around the cylinders right. and not cure it. Then I would have the patient close into the bite, yeah. shimmy it, shimmy and then cure it. Right. And then I'll have a perfect bite. You know, and it's it's not fun to talk about because you know we think these cases should always go perfectly, but it happens. Yeah, and there's bite yeah. issues, and that's a, that's a nice fix as opposed to patient wakes up and you're adjusting for you know 15 minutes. It's, right. It's just a it's a nice way to do it. So the yeah. other the other thing to use there's these little blue <coughs> block out Gotta things. Use the plugs. Gotta use the plugs because in the post here I've it happened to me a couple of times. No, not a couple of times, lots. Where I think I'm I know it, yep. and I and then I get material inside the cylinder. And, and we have to it. drill it out. And drill it out. Very and the, usually the patient is fatigued at the end, and that's when it happens. So you're trying to rush, and you get a little dab of uh, material inside the cylinder. Always use the gaskets. Yep. Always use the plugs. That's it. Safety yep. first. 
um, and uh, be successful. Okay. Yeah. Good. I think that's. And that's take photos cool. afterwards. Oh, and take photos. Yeah, celebrate. And celebrate post them the on success. Our Facebook group. That's right. <laughs> right. And subscribe. And subscribe. Yeah.